Wait, you're sleeping there while my brother and his wife are on a trip. I'm house-sitting with my niece at my brother's house. As we discuss tomorrow's plans with excitement, my niece starts to open the closet door, seemingly ready for bed. Surprised, I watch her slide into the closet without hesitation. As I hurriedly grasp her arm, she looks up at me with a puzzled expression. I'm Lily. I am a 24-year-old housewife. I have a brother who is five years older than me. Having lost our parents, we've always been supportive of each other due to our close sibling bond. This hasn't changed even after we both got married. We still maintain a family-oriented relationship. While my husband's parents are nice, they live quite far away, a distance that requires a plane ride. Due to the long distance, something you'd typically need to fly to cover, it's not so easy to ask for his help. My brother and his wife had a shotgun wedding, but ever since his wife had a foul out with her parents, they've become estranged. Without any neighbors to turn to, we found comfort and ease in our mutually supportive relationship. Furthermore, both our families have been blessed with daughters. For years after my niece was born, my daughter Alice came along and the girls grew up as close as real sisters. As time went by, my niece Emily was about to turn 10 when John told me about their upcoming 10th wedding anniversary trip. Would you mind looking after Emily while we're away? It's just an overnight trip nearby. We thought it would be nice to have some alone time as a couple, said my brother, happily blushing. I readily agreed with a hearty, sure, no problem. We roughly planned out the schedule, and when I asked when I should come to pick up Emily, my brother shook his head. Apparently, my brother was concerned about leaving the house unoccupied due to security reasons and wanted me to stay over instead. Although I teased him for being a worrywart, I eventually agreed to his request, leaving my own daughter, who was still uneasy about sleepovers, in the care of my husband. Days passed uneventfully until the day of their anniversary trip, and as planned, I went to stay at my brother's house. As Emily, looking a bit nervous, watched her parents leave, I took her hand to reassure her. Now it was just the two of us for the house sitting. Initially, I planned to bring my daughter along and just have my husband pick her up at bedtime. However, Emily was unusually adamant about not inviting her to the house. So, I gave up on that plan. Of course, we had visited as a family before, but she must have had a reason for not wanting her here today. It's a shame we can't invite Alice over to play, but we really can't, Emily said with a hint of loneliness. Then how about we go to my house after breakfast tomorrow? I promised, which made her eyes light up. Having prepared some more challenging games and puzzles that even adults would enjoy in consideration of Emily, who usually played along with my daughter, I asked Emily what she'd like to play as we spread them out. We spent time playing games and preparing dinner together. However, Emily seemed nervous the entire time, sticking close to me and frequently glancing around the room. At first, I thought she was just lonely or anxious without her parents around, but her behavior remained unchanged even after several hours. When I asked if something was bothering her, no matter how many times I asked, she just kept saying, I'm fine, nothing's wrong, without telling me what was bothering her. Emily's behavior was as if she was on guard against something invisible. I would come to understand its meaning only when bedtime arrived. Changing into her pajamas, Emily said with a smile, Let's go to bed early today and start out for Aunt Lily's house in the morning as she opened the closet door. Inside was a set of bedding prepared at some unknown time. As I was struggling to grasp the meaning of this, 
Emily quickly laid down on the mattress and attempted to close the closet door, saying, Good night. Wait, Emily, you're sleeping in there. I blurted out, somewhat louder than I intended. Emily replied with a serious face, Yes, but it's okay. I'll leave it slightly open. If anything happens, I'll wake up right away. I tried to hide my confusion as I suggested. Why don't we sleep together tonight? After a few tries, Emily finally agreed and reluctantly got into my bed. She asked if it was okay to keep the bedding in the closet as her hiding spot, and even though it deepened the mystery for me, I naturally agreed. I then cheerfully asked, why do you need a hiding place? After she made me promise not to laugh, she whispered her answer, the monster is coming. If that were all there was to her story, I would have thought it endearing in the way children are. However, the story that followed was enough to make me believe in the existence of the monster. Emily shivered and clung to my arm. The monster is very scary and clever. That's why it only comes when Daddy is not here. Mommy says I can't leave the closet until she has driven the monster away. She always cries while she's driving it away. I tried to help her once, but it was too scary when it pounded on the closet door. Hugging the trembling Emily, I let out a sigh inside. This monster was probably real. It probably wasn't a ploy to get a night owl kid into bed. I was caught off guard by my sister-in-law's affair, and I didn't know what to do. If the monster was her lover, it wouldn't come to this house when she wasn't here. Still, Emily believes the monster comes on the days when her father isn't home. The evidence was that today when my brother wasn't around, she kept asking not to invite my daughter over and never left my side, always keeping an eye on the windows and the front door. Thinking of sweet Emily and my brother who trusts his wife made me angry at my sister-in-law, but I wanted to reassure Emily more than anything else. I squeezed her hand and smiled at her. It's okay because Aunt Lily is here today. The monster is smart, right? So, it might get scared and not come in because it sees a stranger. Also, your mom who's always targeted by the monster is with your dad today, so the monster can't approach her. Still not knowing the true identity of the monster, Emily's face remained clouded with anxiety, and as time passed, she began to fear the monster's imminent arrival. I managed to calm her down as she suggested hiding in the closet together by telling her she could talk to me about anything that bothered her about the monster. I hoped that by addressing each of her concerns one by one, Emily would eventually feel sleepy. However, after hearing another fact from Emily, I couldn't sit still and ended up rushing out of the house with her still in her pajamas. I quickly drove back home, explained the situation to my husband, and then he headed to my brother's house. I had my husband and his friends stay over there. Around 10 p.m. that day, when my husband and his friends had headed over to my brother's house, I received a call from my brother, who was on vacation, asking about Emily's condition. Did Emily go to bed? Forget about your husband and daughter and get some rest yourself. Make sure to lock the doors. Okay, good night. After asking about Emily, my brother's final words were to ensure I locked up and got some sleep. I was sternly told not to leave the house, and I struggled to keep my voice steady. After hanging up, I looked at Emily, who was sound asleep with my daughter, and pledged to drive the monster away. The next morning, my husband, who had stayed overnight at my brother's house, came back. My body trembled with fear and anger as he told me what happened last night. Relieved that my decision from yesterday had been the right one, I spent the rest of the day at home with Emily and my family, waiting for my brother and his wife to come pick her up. When my brother saw us, 
He was quick to question why Emily and I had left the house during the night. Why didn't you guys stay at the other house? I told you repeatedly not to leave our home. What were you thinking going back to your own place after agreeing not to? My brother's strong protest that I had broken my promise was met with a surge of discomfort. I coolly asked him how he knew we weren't home while he was on vacation. My brother then responded, I've given Emily a smartphone with a GPS function. His eyes were evasive as he answered. If that were true, then he wouldn't have insisted so persistently on the phone last night for us not to leave the house. It would have been easy for my brother to verify through the GPS that we weren't at his house. I suppressed the urge to confront my brother immediately and continued the conversation quietly so the kids in the other room wouldn't hear. By the way, late last night, two unfamiliar men showed up at your place. Who were they? Why would they come to a house that should only have Emily and me in the middle of the night? Intruders came. I'm glad you're safe. My brother's voice was trembling, but it wasn't out of fear for the intruders or relief that his daughter was unharmed. His gaze darted around as if carefully selecting his words. Hey, about those guys, I pressed my brother further, demanding to know who the suspicious men were, but my sister-in-law cut me off, perhaps to prevent more questioning. She loudly called Emily over, insisting they leave, as Emily, who had been playing in the other room, timidly showed her face. Her mother forcefully took her hand. Suddenly, my brother also changed his demeanor, saying, I'm not forgiving you for this, but we're leaving for today. He started pushing Emily towards the door. My brother and his wife forcefully tried to take Emily, who clearly did not want to leave, back home with them. What? We're not done talking yet. I tried to stop them, but they just ignored me, not even bothering to look back. Emily, resisting her parents, reached out towards me. I quickly pulled her towards me, sheltering her behind my back. Hey! What do you think you're doing? My sister-in-law raised her voice in surprise, letting go of Emily's hand. But I kept Emily behind me, away from my brother and his wife. They spat aggressive words at us and rushed over, fueled by anger. My husband and I were determined not to let them take Emily and managed to force them out of the room. At the front door, Waiting police officers swiftly apprehended my brother and his wife. The police tried to calm the disoriented couple, who were clearly not expecting this turn of events. Understanding their predicament, my brother argued, If you don't give us back our daughter, then you should be the ones getting detained. My sister-in-law added, They took our daughter from home and locked her up here. Please save Emily right away. You shouldn't be holding me back. I won't run or hide, so let me go. My brother shouted. Emily and my daughter, who had noticed the commotion and come out, were talking behind me, looking surprised. My daughter innocently remarked, She doesn't seem locked up at all. I'm not sure whether my brother heard her or not, but he turned to Emily and commanded her to come to him in a strong tone. Yet, the severity of her father's demeanor scared her, and she refused to leave my side. My sister-in-law stood silently by the police officer, just watching my brother, not even trying to call Emily over. My brother, irate that things weren't going his way, was yelling in the entrance, completely restrained by the police officer. Seeing this, my husband pushed his smartphone in front of my brother's face. Noticing this, I told Emily and my daughter to wait once more in the other room and shut the door so they wouldn't hear the audio. After confirming this, my husband started playing a video he had recorded at my brother's house the night before, without uttering a word. Upon seeing it, 
The faces of my brother and his wife immediately turned pale. The video started with a key slowly turning in the lock of the house. It seemed they used a spare key. Two men quietly entered the room, appearing in high spirits. They greeted each other, mentioning my brother's name. Didn't know we had company. Hey, how much did you pay? He told me it was a 30% discount because she's his sister. One of them smirked, looking over at my husband and his friends. When my husband's friend gave a vague response, avoiding the question, one of the men boasted that because they were good friends with my brother and his wife, they got an even bigger discount, even going as far as mentioning a specific amount. They continued, we're lucky we get to play with the kids today. The profile of the man who laughed was so grotesque it would be an insult to demons to call him one. I couldn't see the screen, but the audio alone was enough to make my skin crawl. Afterwards, my husband's friend started barraging the men with questions, asking if they often came to this house, if they always came as a pair. Sensing something was off, the men asked where Emily and I were. Seeing my husband's enraged expression as he responded, they're not here. It seemed they finally realized the gravity of the situation. Realizing they weren't among friends here, the men quickly fled. Until the very end, they were either unaware of my husband's recording or deliberately didn't mention it. My brother, supposed to be their close acquaintance, seemed to have discovered the existence of the video for the first time and was shaking. Now deathly pale, he frantically stated, I didn't know anything, I've been framed. I had thought until watching this video that my brother was uninvolved and that my sister-in-law was the mastermind behind everything. However, the video contained clear evidence of my brother offering up Emily and me. His ignorance won't convince anyone. My brother was taken away by the police, and my sister-in-law feigned ignorance of the situation. But the police officer, who had already heard Emily's testimony, asked her to accompany him because he had many questions to ask her. Thus, they ended up in custody together. At a later date, the police interrogated my brother and his wife who ended up confessing everything and were subsequently arrested. It turns out my sister-in-law would lure men into their home on the nights my brother worked late shifts and receive money from them. Realizing there was a demand for children among certain groups, she carefully exploited Emily in a way that wouldn't run afoul of the law. Emily, who knew nothing and was trying to help her bullied mother, was photographed posing as she was told. The pictures were merely innocent photos of a child. Yet, my sister-in-law would go out of her way to take these simple photos with a disposable camera, develop them, and show them to her customers, inducing a bidding war as though at an auction. What's more, she only lent out the photos. She never sold them. As despicable as this was, it should have had nothing to do with my husband and me. When my brother became aware of his wife's business, he didn't scold her or protect his daughter. Instead, unbelievably, he started gathering men to become customers. More staff meant more revenue. With such a simple mindset, my brother decided to involve me in the business. Of course, I would never agree to it if he simply asked me. So. My brother thought to force me to work and continued to threaten me by taking photos of the scene. And so, they carefully chose a day when the neighbors wouldn't be around and locked Emily and me in their house. They exchanged the spare key to their home for a large sum of money and went out of town for an overnight trip just to prove they weren't involved. What my brother and his wife didn't expect was that Emily, who had always obeyed my sister-in-law without question, regretted telling me about the monsters to protect me. Emily didn't understand most of what was happening in the house, but she did understand that the monsters were targeting them. By telling me, 
she brought the hellish situation at my brother's house to light. That night, when I learned about Emily's predicament, I asked my husband to capture the image of these so-called monsters. They carelessly leaked a lot of information, so the police acted promptly when we reported it. We also reported it to Child Protective Services, making sure to protect Emily. When we told the police officer about my brother and his wife coming to our house, they were able to secure Emily from them. My brother and his wife were arrested on serious charges, such as child welfare law violations and violations of laws preventing child exploitation. Despite being first-time offenders, they could not avoid imprisonment. The photos of a child they had been taking over several years were considered highly malicious. Once an image is leaked on the internet, it can never be erased. I was shocked when the police told me this, but fortunately, my sister-in-law had not digitized or sold Emily's photos, and they were securely stored, preventing any leakage. I don't understand how my brother, who had been kind and reliable to me, could have become such a terrible person. We had been helping each other out as usual until then. The fact that I didn't notice this distortion scares me. Anyway, I want them to face what they've done. Following the arrest of my brother and his wife, the so-called monsters were also brought in for questioning by the police. They apparently argued their innocence, claiming that because their plans had not been successful, they weren't guilty. However, it seems that the discovery of someone else's child's photographs at their residence and their involvement in other criminal acts confessed by my brother and his wife during their interrogations led to them also being arrested on multiple charges. After we took care of the monsters lurking in our lives, we went to the Child Protective Services to inquire about Emily's situation. Her parents were arrested, leaving her without anyone to care for her. In fact, they were unfit to be guardians in the first place, so custody of Emily was taken away from my brother and his wife. That said, Neither my brother nor I have any living parents, and my sister-in-law's family is completely estranged. We learned that if no one from my sister-in-law's family would agree to take her in, Emily would be taken in by foster parents. After talking it over with my husband, we decided to adopt Emily. To me, Emily is not only someone I'm greatly indebted to, but also a girl I've grown to love as my own daughter. The thought of leaving her was simply unbearable. Luckily, my husband agreed, and we saw this as an opportunity to move to my in-law's town. Our daughter, who loves her grandparents and has always wanted an older sister, is overjoyed. She's been excitedly looking forward to the weekend when she could see her grandparents more often, and now her wish of having Emily, who she adores as her big sister, came true. And as for Emily, who finally got out of the clutches of her abusive parents, she's adapting incredibly well to her new environment as an older sister. It's amazing how resilient kids can be. She's beginning to lead a happy and peaceful life.